All right, guys, tonight we're playing on the Superflow 1020 flow bench. For those of you who don't know what a flow bench is, it's a big, essentially fan box that uh, it's got four or five big commercial fans in it. Pulls about 75 amps out of the wall and it pushes a bunch of air through a cylinder head. It's got a couple pipettes on uh, both sides of some orifices in there to measure the pressure drop. And essentially we can pull this at about 28 inches of a vacuum, which is about a one PSI pressure drop. And it's just a great way to simulate how much airflow you can get through your cylinder head. So it's got this cool little apparatus here. It lets you open the valve in thousandths of an inch. And um, tonight I have an OG, this is cool. This is an old school Hamilton low swirl, high flow head. This is the original head that put Hamilton cams on the map. This came off my junker drag truck a couple years ago and we're getting ready to do the Papasaurus build. Normally I would just put one of our uh, power driven stage one or stage two heads on there, but uh, you guys bought them all. <laughs> so I'm kind of short on heads. I'm trying to not steal a head from a customer that might need it. So I've got this old head, but I want to see what it flows before I go strap it on my truck. Because uh, let's be honest, those common rails are getting pretty mean. And if I'm going to hang in there with Josh and these other East versus West guys at this uh, street race we're going to in Kansas, um, I need some serious head flow. So let's uh, check out the bench a little closer and uh, we're gonna get some flow numbers off this head, both the intake and the exhaust, and uh, uh, maybe we'll give you a little little update on what else we're doing on Pop Source. All right, so we're gonna, uh, I've already done the, uh, the intake side, but just to show you, I, I got set up before the camera guy got set up, but uh, let's go down here. We're gonna go to 100 thousandths on the dial indicator. There's 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So now we've got the intake valve opened 100. You notice we have a dummy injector in here with clay, so you gotta plug that hole. And we gotta have dummy springs in here that are light enough that the dial indicator can push them out without breaking it, but heavy enough that it keeps it closed when you're doing intake. Otherwise it'll suck the exhaust valve open and give you some more airflow. And you'll think you have the best flowing exhaust in the industry. Um, we're gonna go to the range here. Let's put this down on three. So the max this can flow is 95 CFM right now, which at 100 thousandths, it's not gonna flow more than that, so we're in the right range. And we're doing all this testing at 28 inches. If you have a smaller flow bench that doesn't have all these super fans, you can't pull 28 inches on a high flowing head. This flow bench flows over 1,000 CFM, so they're probably very few cylinder heads in existence that you can't pull 28 inches with this machine. We actually were doing some filter testing the other day and we could actually measure up to 1500 CFM. It's kind of out of its range so it loses accuracy, but it'll actually flow enough to measure about 1500 CFM, which is pretty cool. At about, I think that's down at like 20 inches, but still pretty awesome. You can see the bench is just trying to hit 28 inches here. So you can see it's at 27.9, 28, and that's the flow, 60.2 CFM. So at 28 inches, this intake valve's flowing 60.2. Now you'll see on my little chart here, at 100, it flowed 60. And I'll just save you the, the pain at 200 is 113, 300, 152, 400, 195, 500, 213. 600, 223, and 700, it did 230. Let me turn this off. Now what's kind of, now what's kind of interesting, um, a head like this, when Hamilton designed this, this is like a race head for like a big cam. With a factory cam, you don't even get into the five, six, and 700 lift range at all. So all these numbers are pointless. Really all you're focusing on really is the one to 400 range. Stock cam barely lifts over 400, about 450 thousand. It depends if you're 12 valve or 24 valve, but, but still 195 is huge. I think the last factory head we flowed peaked out at like 132 and it did not gain all the way up at five, six, 700 lift. It hit 132 at about 300 or 400 lift and it didn't gain any more. So this is a pretty big upgrade over stock. So let's do the exhaust side. I'll kind of show you how we set up the uh, indicator on here to do the exhaust. First thing we got to do, 
is we gotta put it on exhaust mode right now. See, it's on intake mode, so it's pretty cool. You just push this button, moves all the orifices and stuff around inside. Kind of a pretty cool machine, actually. Makes it a lot easier. Old school flow benches, you had to use manometers and do all kinds of math and ratios. This thing does it all for you, pretty sweet. So we're on exhaust. So now we're gonna come back up here and uh, let's move this indicator over onto the exhaust valve. I'll pull this back up to zero. We're gonna reduce this. Let's go down to 100 and turn on the exhaust. So that's 100 lift on the exhaust valve. Now this gets really noisy because you get a lot of airflow out of here, but if it blows out your speakers, I, I apologize. See, look, quite a bit of airflow at 100. So it looks like, looks like we got about 55 CFM. I just rounded the nearest whole number, okay? Okay, so now we have to step up a range. This uh, range that it was on can only flow up to 97, but it has ranges so it has the most accuracy. Um, if you test that same thing on the highest setting, it might say 95 CFM. So you can lose two or three depending on what range you're on. That was right on the edge, right at the end it clicked an arrow saying you need to go up a range to let you know. So we were on range three, there are um, nine ranges. So let's go up to uh, so we gotta hit this F3 button here and go down in here to the range setting. We were on range three and look, the last number 98.3. So now we're gonna go to range five, which will go all the way up to 195 CFM. Now it's moving some orifices and stuff around in the machine. Let's see what she does. It's gonna be real noisy now. All right, guys, the numbers are in. Um, this head flowed pretty good considering it's right out of the box. There's no port work. There's no special valve job. This is as it came from Hamilton as a, as a hookup a buddy deal. So it might not even been his best work. Might have been a, a blem. I don't know. Um, but anyways, uh, 55 
so this is the exhaust numbers, 55 at 100, 98 at 200, 135 at 300, 161 at 400, 175 at 5, 182 at 600, and 184 CFM at 700 valve lift. Now, I'm, there's kind of a national shortage on cam, so I'm gonna be running a little bit smaller cam. So I'm not even gonna get much above 400 lift in my application right away. And so the bigger gains this head offers mostly on the intake side at big lift, I won't even be able to take advantage of. The other little downside with these low swirl heads, and this is why Hamilton came out with this high swirl street head, is the low swirl affects the combustion at low RPM or like when you're trying to build boost at the starting line, like when you're drag racing. And the high swirl heads seem to light turbos better, get a little better fuel mileage, a little less haze. And so that's why they came out with that. So to me, since I'm trying to run an 80 millimeter charger on the manifold with a 6.1 stroker, a big turbine S400, uh, compounded with something even bigger, I, I'm gonna go for one of these little bit higher, higher swirl heads anyway. I just, I kinda want, kinda want the swirl and I feel like if the head is better matched to the smaller cam I'm doing, might have a little bit better results. If I go slap this head on with a bigger cam or one of the PDD stage two heads with the bigger valves that flow more, um, that's better suited for a, a, a big cam, that, that's probably where we'd go. So anyway, so let's, uh, let's throw a PDD stage one head on here and uh, see what kind of numbers we get out of it. All right, guys, we got the PDD stage one head strapped on here. Now keep in mind, this is the factory valve size. So a 1650 exhaust, a 177 intake valve. Um, we're gonna test this at 100,000 increments, just like the other head. Um, just wanna see how this head hangs in there with these smaller valves. Um, I don't have one of our stage twos on hand. I'd love to do the same size valve, but uh, this is what we got today, so let's, uh, Let's get to it. All right, so we already had this set up on exhaust. We're gonna start at the exhaust side. We are at uh, zero lift here. We're gonna back this off. See dial indicators right at zero. Now we're gonna go down 100. Turn this thing on. Exhaust, range three. Got some turbulence here. It's kind of stuttering. It doesn't like that lift. Okay. Let's go to 200. So we're out of the range because it's flown over 110. So we gotta go up the next range. All right, so this is really interesting. Um, the exhaust started off 55, which uh, matched the Hamilton right there, but it sounded like it had some weird turbulence. It was kind of whistling and just, it didn't sound happy. I was expecting to see the valve bobbing the way it was kind of like surging. Um, at 200, 
it jumped clear up to 119. It still sounded funny, which is huge. The other, the, uh, the Hamilton head was right around 100. Um, sometimes with bigger valves, you get where the port will kind of stall because the, basically sometimes big valves are lazy down low when they have a high flow up top. And that's probably what's going on here. So this thing really took off at 200. 300, 166, monster. The other one was at 135. So this head, this exhaust flow with that 165 valve works really well. Um, uh, then it got to 176 at 400, and that's where it peaked out. 500 at lost, 174, 600, 174, 700. So if you were a cam designer and you looked at this head flow, you'd be like, there's no reason to lift this head higher than 400 unless you needed it to somehow get more duration and keep the, uh, the tappet from jumping because at 400 lift, it's done. So um, this should work really well with that budget builder cam. We'll see. Like I said, the dyno will, will tell the true tale. I have no idea how this, uh, what this truck's going to do on the dyno. All I know is I have to beat a whole bunch of common rails with a bunch of custom tuning. And I have an old, an old P-pump, some big old whole set, big old whole set turbo feeding a, a Borg Warner and uh, maybe a little bit of go juice on there to, to you know, the, the scramble button as they call it. So let's, uh, let's check out the intake side and see what it does. Um, I expect the intake to be down. All the testing I've done, usually the stock intake valve really holds you back, especially when you get up in the higher lift numbers. So uh, I'll be really interested to see what this one does. All right, guys, so the numbers are in on this uh, PDD stage one intake. We did 63 at 100, and uh, that big valve OG Hamilton did 60. So the small valve shines, and this, this would happen if we put a, a Hamilton high swirl with a standard valve, I'll bet you it too would outflow the OG head. But you gotta realize race heads are <laughs> different than, than other heads. They're not necessarily chasing lift at 100 thousandths. Um, at 200, we flowed 120, and the OG Hamilton was 113, so they're close. At 300, we did 157, OG Hamilton was 152. So up to 300, this head's actually beating it. Remember, we only lift the intake valve on this um, 444 thousandths. 400, the OG Hamilton was 195, and we were 172. So like I said, at 400, that Hamilton head takes off and it starts getting ahead. But we're pretty much out of, out of valve lift there. At 500, 176, uh, 600, 179, 700, 181. Once again, if you're designing a cam for this, the gains got really small once you got above 400. Maybe 450 is all you would, because it only picked up four CFM going from 400 to 500, but it picked up you know, over 10 CFM going for 300 to 400. So, you know, actually 15 CFM. So the, uh, the gains got much smaller as we got bigger. So once again, this head's great for a street truck with a stock cam. Um, and I'm excited to put this on pop source and see, uh, see what it does for me. So, um, thanks for tuning in tonight guys. And, um, Look forward to the next video. We're gonna go over some of more of the updates on the, on the engine as we're building the engine for this Papa Source. Remember, it's a 6.1 liter stroker. Um, we're using a, a dual steel Ringland cast piston. It's kind of a, a budget conscious race, race engine that um, hopefully can hang in there at 14 or 1500 horsepower. I, we'll see. Thanks. <laughs>